uh, you can read it there. Uh, David wrote uh, about how we can see our currency, so which was called the Tovi, by the way, which means a, a moment that um, we can see it as a credit commons, a part of a credit commons. And uh, the entire process that we went through, which took uh, several months to come to the rules of how we operate our currency, that that is then the commoning uh, around our, our currency, which we are governing as a commons. So we developed uh, Helsinki Time Bank's ABC. If this process interests you, uh, on our website, you can find you can find those rules, principles that we charted in uh, a series of workshops that we did together, um, and it's in it's it's also in English and in, in Finnish, of course. Um, and we defined what we were about. We talked about culture. We talked about mutual assistance, mutually caring for each other, and we talked about economy. And um, yeah, it was a very interesting process. Because uh, again, coming from the point of view of the neighborly help uh, versus the economy, we found each other <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a common definition that we all could stand, uh, stand for, which was an important process. And actually uh, having a little bit followed uh, different kind of currency processes, community currency processes, that making of the rules of how our currency is going to work, what are the values that it's going to uh, is super important and as much worth as anything else that will be happening with the currency. It's really the heart, the core of the process, which then ties people together under those under those values. So I already was telling something about taxation. Now we knew, of course, in Finland, where there certainly is still something of a welfare state standing and ourselves being happy taxpayers, um, we knew that we needed to deal with the issue of taxation in this story. Uh, in this story where more and more people joined Helsinki Time Bank, other time banks elsewhere, there was already even sharing, I mean, exchanging happening uh, between time banks. So it started to get really interesting. Uh, there were also uh, initiatives joining the time bank, like for instance, our food co-op. Um, we had some organizations joining. Uh, so of course we were getting organized actors on board of the time bank. So it was just getting more and more interesting. Um, we definitely wanted to develop our ideas with regards to taxation. But before we could come out with what would be our proposal, before that already via uh, a long process, I leave it aside now, but it happened to be so that a question was put in Parliament um, about the fact that uh, we have this time banking happening in Finland, which is a nice thing, but the issue of taxation hasn't been addressed. We should now address this issue. And since it was put forward in Parliament, obviously a, um, uh, a, a solution needed to come to this issue. And uh, there came the process that was in 2013, uh, in which tax officials, they developed over summer, <laughs> they developed taxation guidelines for time banking in Finland. We participated in discussions, but it felt afterwards that we only helped them to be sharpening their regulations. And the outcome of it was that um, it was still certainly and still is uh, allowing for like uh, occasional, uh, meaning nothing like regularly, routinely happening, neighborly exchanges in the time bank, all fine. But if somebody would in the time bank uh, be offering what they are doing really also for their work, um, there would be the necessity to be paying uh, income, I mean, taxation on, on, on uh, tovis that were earned. And at that point, it would be done according to the market value, which that work would be presenting, meaning that suddenly the entire equality base of what our work is in the time bank is not anymore the same. So it was really destroying the equality basis under which you operate in a time bank. And that changed uh, the picture. So do I understand correctly that you would 
kind of offer someone an hour of some work, but then you pay in euros something to the state. Yeah, you would need to pay taxation on, yeah. And uh, that ruling out. People are very confused. <laughs> Can you, like, what, what, what would be your, what was your proposal that you didn't have time to? Tovi vero. Tovi vero. So we were just at the same time as this uh, Vero Karhu <laughs> came down as the, one of the main popular news was telling on TV, Vero Karhu is now coming down on time banking in Finland. Um, we were, we had been developing our Tovi Vero proposal, so our, 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 our time tax. So we have in the time ba da bank already, we have a mechanism that, um, so the idea is that whenever I'm earning a Tovi, there's a small percentage of that, which we call a Tovi tax and which I can be assigning to a solidarity economy actor in our time bank. So meaning that, for instance, I had our food cooperative um, ticked in the system. So it meant that whenever I was uh, earning tovis, there would be a little part which would be going to um, my solidarity economy actor of choice, which was the time, which was the food cooperative. Now it could also be, you could imagine that in a time bank also public actors, if you agree that public actors can join in the time bank, let's say your local care, or, or perhaps a uh, um, library or, or different, different services, places could be joining in the time bank and people who want to, so we're not talking about cheap labor, but people who want to, they could decide that they want to be um, spending for whatever reason, some of their time in these places and spaces, um, which they could be getting tovis for because those actors would be getting a tovi vero. Um, uh, uh, time tax uh, because of transactions made in the time bank. So with this, we were wanting to say that we can have a community currency going and we can be talking about taxation being simply at this moment, the strengthening of good projects in our society, which we want to be supporting collectively, um, that we can do that through our currency and in those values. So we wanted to talk about taxation and you could think of all kinds of interesting things. I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to just very briefly tell you, you see on the photo there, you see actually in a Spanish economist, Susana Belmonte, she visited also in Finland and uh, she's there actually at, the, now I've forgotten it, it's one of the economic institutes uh, in Helsinki that we went to visit with her. Now it's now it's escaping me, it's some years ago. Uh, but anyway, um, you could imagine different interesting uh, designs in that way. Now, I don't know what you all think about the basic income. It could be that some of you think it's, uh, it's a great thing that should happen. It could be that others of you think it's just, uh, it, it remains an upholding of, uh, of a state instrument uh, which you are not for, but um, just to just to just to share with you the idea that came out of uh, her work and our conversations, and which links to to also the time tax. You could be imagining that there is something as a basic income that you could be choosing for, and you would be getting a basic income in euros that really is uh, sufficient, a real basic income. Then you could imagine that you, when you receive the basic income, you agree to the fact that you're having a debt. Now, the debt would be a certain amount of hours, imagine. And imagine that there then is a citizen's process going on um, in which citizens would together determine what are these projects in our society that we really care for, like, for instance, our food cooperatives, but which we know that are struggling to be on their feet, to, to have enough people with, to have enough resources. Um, if we would be listing them in such a citizen's process and that you who received the basic income, who has that debt, you could be um, agreeing with going to work for certain of those projects, earn then um, a community currency. Let's say it would be uh, a time token, pay off with that um, your debt, and at the same time, that could also be used in a network of actors, which is accepting, uh, accepting the uh, currency. So you can, at that moment, 
you have a basic income which is offsetting a currency for the commons. It's just, it's just one idea of a way to imagine that you could be doing something really creative. Now we, when this happened, the taxation guidelines, we had a few seminars with the taxation officials, with Helsinki City council members, university people, I mean, research people, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we tried to talk about the ideas. And it was great that we could have those seminars and events, but they didn't lead to anything. So today we are still having these taxation guidelines in place. And what concretely happened was that many time banks elsewhere in Finland were very disappointed with this ruling. It was kind of like a, a slap in the face for trying to do uh, putting a good citizens initiative on their feet. So Helsinki Time Bank is still standing. Um, there are still people exchanging and um, but uh, it certainly caused a slump in the whole development of Time Bank. And it was a real pity it went like that. And it was also a real shame that we were not able to revert that discussion. I don't know if it still can someday, but um, such was that story. But as said today, uh, Helsinki Time Bank is, is still standing and I'm still of the opinion that um, a time bank in which we say that everybody's work uh, time needs is of equal worth is still a fantastic concept to be working. Um, I then, because I started to work for our cooperative, uh, less became like a, a driver of the community process and um, that role was not so much filled. So that's missing at the moment. Like all of these initiatives, like you all, I'm sure also will be knowing from your own experiences, they need, I'm, I'm calling it drivers. I'm, I'm, I'm calling it, I mean, people who put in their time and have a, have a passion for it and want to see things going forward. Um, you need at least preferably more than one person who, who engages in that way for these processes to go onward. Um, so I, I have not been that person anymore and not somebody else who's been stepping up. So it's a slower, more sleepy process at the moment, but I'm still hoping that um, perhaps when our co-op, our food co-op uh, is, is a bit stronger, that it will be possible to, well, actually combine, <laughs> combine the both would be fantastic. And um, our, our, I'm thinking, thinking a lot about that because it's a worthy, it's certainly a very worthy, worthy process. I was wondering... Um, can you can you comment on this distribution of these uh, time tokens? So you had like forty thousand tokens uh, uh, exchange, but was there somebody who was like who was having five thousand of them on their account, like becoming this Toby millionaire in a bad way? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. It's certainly uh, certainly all kind of things happened. So we started to also develop there some kind of rules. Uh, actually, not so much on the, um, uh, not so much on a, how you call it, a, a roof or a top level. Uh, let's say that the threat uh, of that was not so big, or it wasn't, it's not so much perceived as a, as a, as a, as a, as a threat, so to speak. But we were more concerned uh, with the people who simply needed help um, for whatever reason, and uh, who were just going like, who were not able to do for whatever reason or another in the time bank and who we were going like minus minus, whereas actually they were doing a very good thing and beautiful thing because they were using the time bank, right? So we also had um, a common account uh, where actually uh, the person who is um, uh, buying a service, uh, there is a little percentage from that uh, going always towards our common account. And then we would be nullifying, putting to zero, I mean, uh, accounts of people who were uh, simply like, for instance, sometimes somebody has been ill for a longer time. And uh, we wanted to then take contact with the person who was really getting into a lot of minus, uh, talk about it, and then also um, and then also zero the account to simply, even though it shouldn't even matter, be, is it there that minus or the plus in a sense that, you know, you want to get away from that logic, 
uh, you want to say that, listen, this is just the accounting, don't, don't worry about it. But of course, at the same time, you wanted to, you wanted to create the balance there and, and also help the person. Um, so this is, for instance, one way, the way we did things. Um, the stacking of the tovis of the currency, of course, also uh, poses questions about how well was then the person able to use them, no? And that, of course, has to do with the development of the time bank process itself. Um, how well is it possible to get to have different people doing different things in the time bank? And that, of course, relates to the taxation thing that then that when the moment came that we got those guidelines, of course, it did deter uh, people, but certainly also organized places, because, of course, people started to be kind of afraid. And they were even kind of thinking, like, what is there? There's, you know, some taxation people in the time bank. You know, we didn't have any kind of uh, screening things going on as to whom was joining. People could join the time bank who underwrote our principles. And, and that was it, because we also wanted to create trust. So it was not a not a um, it was a process that is wanted to be keep kept as open as possible, like also all accounts in the time bank were all open. Everybody could see from somebody else um, what the person was doing in the time bank. Um, now I almost forgot what we were. I hope this yeah. answer. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I realized that my question was really silly. And I guess the perfect account would be a very active account, but the balance would be zero, right? So you have given something and you have taken something and then it kind of evens out perfectly. Yeah. Yes, whilst acknowledging that there can be for everybody a, a time to give and a, and a, and a time to take and, and to accept that, etc. But again, all this gave really interesting discussions and they were also worth a lot um, to have these deliberations about what's happening and, and are we worried about this or that or how should we see it? That was uh, very, very valuable reminiscings. Yeah, I... I move on a bit then coming to food as a common. So our, our beautiful food co-op, um, something about that one too. Um, and coming then also a little bit more to the significance of these initiatives. Um, a lot of words are put out for you already on the slide, which helps me uh, stay, stay on the track. I, I put here up front how, if we want to talk about food as a commons, uh, there's the well-known concept that certainly also you will be knowing of food sovereignty, right? It's that concept developed by what is arguably the largest social movement uh, today globally of small peasants, uh, fishermen, uh, hunters and gatherers, La Via Campesina, who then already, when things were getting extremely tough uh, in the global south to run up against the agriculture uh, exports coming from elsewhere, they developed the notion of food sovereignty. So the point being that it was not only about food security, that um, you know there has to be food for everybody, but that it matters how, how our, what our food system looks like. So food sovereignty refers then to the fact that we all have the right to determine our food system, meaning the way how food is produced, uh, distributed and consumed. Um, very much it was a conversation, a discussion in the global south, but of course increasingly also uh, for us, this is a very concrete concrete struggle and um, point to uh, a lot of commonalities and of course total interdependence. I mean, for us to change our, our own systems is the only way to allow for sovereignty also elsewhere. Um, now, there are many initiatives that are trying to change our food system, uh, but then as to what goes the furthest with regard to really wanting to come to transformation, uh, there is the notion of community-supported agriculture, Kumpanus uh, Matalos, as it is put there in Finnish. So CSAs, again, perhaps something concept known to several of you, but here what we're talking about is the creation of a mutual web of support between producer members, farmers and others, and the so-called normal food members, meaning the members in, 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 in a co-op who will be getting uh, food bags in, in some form or another. It means a financial mutual 
web of support, but it can go much further. Uh, it can also become an entire pedagogical, ecological and social pro process of learning together. How do we come to a sustainable food system? How can also not only we support our farmers, but how can actually agriculture become something that also supports us as people and communities um, and also provoke uh, change? I put there the, um, the kind of um, a description of what our food co-op is as we have it in our um, plan of action at the moment. Um, so as written there that Omama wants to be furthering a year around because we make food bags the year around except for two weeks. So uh, the last week and the first uh, week of the year. So a year around ecological community, people's process around good agriculture and agriculture here then, of course, it's about the cultivating of the land uh, to be fulfilling people's food needs, but also other basic needs. And we can think, for instance, of, of energy, but also housing and to then make good good life possible. So it wants to draw open the notion of, of, of agriculture as being simply something um, and, and to see it as a much larger, larger process related to fundamental uh, basic needs. Um, our food co-op uh, is starting from a beautiful farm, the Lassila farm. It's some 30 kilometers outside of Helsinki. It's been, uh, it's a family farm that has been in the family for hundreds of years. Um, and where our farmer then today, who, who founded the cooperative in 2009, has been doing uh, organic farming now for um, more than, a bit more than 20 years. Um, there are two farms in the cooperative and we have distribution and activities in some, a few smaller cities around and then Helsinki, where there's the most of our food bags are going there. So we're talking about some quite, quite a large area. Um, this year we are cultivating in some form or another, caring for some hundred hectares of land. Uh, I have a little bit, uh, give you some details there for you to have a notion. Uh, there are gardens, uh, food forest. Uh, we also have three cows which are grazing. They're defenders of biodiversity. We don't milk them otherwise, but they have a fantastic kingdom there. Um, in front of uh, Tuzola Lake, a lake on which the farm is bordering and where also the water comes from via a, a pump and an elaborate uh, water system to, to all our fields, uh, also a system that we have been building ourselves. Um, Self-sufficient is an objective and we are trying that by making food bags year round in, in Finland, as said, uh, you will agree, uh, it's, it, these are not the most easiest places uh, to come to self-sufficiency the year round and uh, admittedly we still, still have got some way to go and it's also not to say that no direct good trade would be possible with uh, other co-ops a little bit down south where certain things will grow that will not grow um, chez nous but uh, self sufficiency definitely is a, a strong value there, um, as also to work with the notion of not only smalling our, our ecological footprint, but to actually talk about the increasing of our ecological handprint, meaning in what ways actually agriculture, caring for the land can be ecologically improving situations of both biodiversity issues also as nutrient recycling and of course, uh, carbon sequestration. Very at the fundamental of it is that it's a pedagogical process. Again, again, this issue of people coming together and um, setting the rules, uh, thinking about it, how they come to achieve together their objective and learning the hard way around that uh, if we don't weed, it's going to affect the harvest. And if we don't harvest enough, it's going to affect what is in our food bags uh, in the winter because it will inf affect our sellers and um, that's the that's the process that we are we are walking um, as I said two farms um, the lands and the forest the a kitchen where we also are ready-made products and then we have a little membership space uh, in Helsinki where we also do farm dining so not fine dining but farm dining three three menu courses uh out of uh, ingredients of the farm and uh, that's the time it's a little bit like the crowning of, of, of things that we are doing and they they are wonderful evenings um 
yeah. A here a little bit of the design of the co-op. Um, as said, established in 2009, then since 2014, a CSA with uh, producer members and food members. Um, we have, of course, we have our board, we have different kind of working groups. And then we also, this year, we came to the role of investors, which was a long, really interesting process. So, and which also caused a little bit of a noise in the sense that a small co-op starts to come out with investment shares. Now, what is that all about? Uh, we can talk more about that if, if, if that interests. But so um, we went into the subject of positive investment, meaning that not all, only creating some sort of ethical investment in which you try to you invest somehow in the least worst possibility, to talk about positive investment, meaning that you want to invest directly in something that you are believing in and now also have shareholders. So we created a third role in the co-op, producer member, food members and investors with their own, own rules. And well, in a way, I mean, they all the same, have the same open floor for them to, to come out and join us in the process, but they don't have a share. Their shares are a different share than the food members and producer members have in the co-op, which is guaranteeing uh, a part of the food production. The investor shares kind of the, the, the other type of uh, traditional shares um, form. Uh, some photos here of our, of our food bags. So our food bags go to some hundred households uh, at the moment. Um, we are certainly not yet on a zero leveling out between costs and uh, income. So we are certainly still challenged with growing stronger. Um, to grow stronger also in the process for people to understand what is being grown, what it takes, why we have to take the whole food bag and not only the raisins that we really like, meaning for instance, you like the falafel, but you, you can't deal with the, uh, what is it, the uh, I mean, the, the, the grains that are kind of like an alternative to, to, to rice, which so many people like. So we have different kind of grains that we have as an alternative, which learn, which is a process of learning to also eat them. And why do we have to do, do that? Um, why do we all have to have that same bag? These are just some of the discussions that we're having. And that is part of the learning process for people uh, to also understand that you cannot only come in for the summer bag when there are the veggies, you need to also work together throughout the winter uh, because we're trying to change the whole system. And we can only come to more beautiful bags with more and more variations and uh, development uh, if we have enough people with. So mm -hmm. it's a profoundly pro pedagogical process that are working in process with considerable costs and therefore we are yeah we are we are we are still fighting to to come stronger strong on our feet so to speak even though already so much more so much beautiful beautiful things happen yeah here i i i put it a bit there that one of the tensions is that why is this one bag for everybody and and why can i not pick and choose um, so to come away from the notion of understanding that uh, food as a commons does not mean that this is a shop uh, so we sometimes have been making memes about it, that this is not a shop. Cecina Paz and Pip, and now the Magri, uh, famous painting. So now we have that, uh, this is not a shop. And um, all of that, that has to do with the, why we have the same bag for everybody has to do a lot with um, that changing of the whole system about the need for development. And, and uh, also has to do with the, what the work is that the producer members want to be uh, doing it's uh, it's about provoking a change uh, for everybody at, at home uh, also and not only uh, for people in the kitchen to be doing doing the work for you so a larger discussion the uh, question about uh, the previous picture was in my mind that is it all plant-based one one back there was this yeah. something in the in the vacuum uh, on the left and I was like what is yeah, this sorry. Yeah, it, these are indeed vegan food bags. Yeah, and uh, but we also have uh, chickens on the farm, and um, a lot of there's also a good part of the members that do uh, order eggs. That is what we do have. 
so we basically have vegan members and um, non-vegan um, members coexisting in the co-op, which is a known discussion. And the whole uh, issue of animals on the farm, of course, is an own discussion, whereas we also, everybody is knowing that animals do have a very important role on the farm. Uh, then it comes to a discussion, how do we feel that coexistence um, and what do we feel that needs to be uh, happening and a part of it? And, and uh, again, in its own very interesting discussions. But so we are having vegan food bags and then with the option to also have eggs. That's where we are at the moment with there still being then discussions going on because for instance, if you order eggs from chickens, we do not yet do the whole breeding process of chickens. So chickens that are on our farm, they are coming from the industrial setting and then they live a longer and also happier life uh, with us, which is by the way also uh, a challenging issue. We had them, you know, they, they are, they are, of course, they are very happy when last year we built things so that they could be roaming in the food forest. So they had a very large area uh, to roam. The problem was, of course, because there was nets around it, as there is in any case around the food forest, because there are all kind of uh, predators, so to speak, but the nets, they are not all. Uh... And so foxes, foxes were getting very clever of going under the fence and also hawks, of course, because you would need to cover the entire area if you want to uh, protect against hawks. So actually um, this year we're thinking about it, how to go about this in the future, because it got actually rather dangerous for the chickens. But then also comes in the issue that if you would want to be, you know, if you still want to have those eggs, you should actually come to the breeding of chickens and if you're talking about the breeding of the chickens then it means that you're talking about life but you also then need to think about death and what happens then and uh how does a core and how do you take care of that so yeah again a lot of questions that this working together works up and um how do we coexist on that uh, i was wondering um looking at this picture uh, of this food bag uh, who is packing them and do they get paid? Do they get paid in Tovi or euros or uh, how does it work exactly? Yeah, so we 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 pack. Um, uh, so we're having a few, including myself, remunerated people working. Um, no full time, even though, even though full time working happens. Uh, so let's say that a minimum of remunerated that currently is possible uh, is being paid. Um, books are open to discuss about that constantly and what is possible. And um, we are also in need for more people to be with us. So we are very much up against that battle with the, with the resources and are we able to remunerate people in a way that, um, because of course we have food, which is a fantastic thing, uh, but we, we also need uh, about the Tovis. So our, our co-op has been in the time bank. And um, um, I'm remembering that, for instance, promotion activities happened via the time bank. We also had some food bag orders in the time bank um, that has stopped now for some years. And I would be very eager to get back to that, that whole constellation, but it would mean spending time with it and... Um, at the moment, we are a bit too stretched to take on such a process, but I very much hope we can get back to that. Because I do uh, believe- uh, One more activities. question. Yeah. Maybe um, who, I mean, uh, how do people pay for, for this food bag? Uh, In Euros. I, I guess, yeah, okay. You already kind of answered that. And you, um, there are plans to, uh, pay for the food bags, like give an option to pay for them in, in Tovis, right? Uh, that was an option earlier. Yeah. Um, it okay. is at the moment not, and it's something that would like to get back to, but it is also something that you realize that we, we somehow need to stand stronger for that, 
uh, for that circulation to be really happening place. This, this being said, there are actually a lot of different agreements with people in a more unofficial way. Um, there are different people that will have different commitments to the co-op who are perhaps uh, are, are around and are working and can have food in exchange for the work that they are doing. Uh, but it happens in more unofficial ways. Um, yeah. And uh, we are also now at the moment, we are trying to think of how in Germany happens a lot, which is interesting, which are bidding rounds. So I don't know if that is familiar, but basically a cooperative, food cooperative will go through the process of putting forward that this is our budget, asks then everybody to mostly anonymously, that's normally the way it happens, put in your bid, how much are you willing to pay for the food bag on a monthly basis or however they, they do it. Everybody puts in what they say they can offer, what they want to offer, and then they check if the budget has been achieved. If it hasn't been achieved, then they will ask people to please, we haven't achieved their budget. Can you raise your stakes? And they do a next bidding round. So in that way, you would be en enabling more that uh, people can basically pay according to capacity. Um, and that way also, yeah. So it means that for instance, you know, somebody who is a student or somebody who is unemployed or um, versus somebody who, who, who is in, in another position could be also paying uh, on a different level and still, still be able to take part. So we are, we're trying to explore that uh, discussion now for next spring. And of course it needs a bit of working together also in the co-op. It obviously also needs a lot of trust in each other. Uh, you need to, and um, yeah, you need to stand strong, at least in your core community, uh, about wanting to do such a process together. Again, uh, a discussion process. Yeah. Yes. Um, I still share a little bit with you, um, just a little moment still about, um, well, I've been talking about it, uh, that it's why it is important for things to become more of a commons. And I, I guess you will be getting this picture now through talking about the commons and then the time banks and food, but still then taking it a, a little bit further. Um, what, what really is it that we're, we're saying? I, I skipped that other slide and I go straight here to a, a very wonderful quote uh, by our, this, our farmer, our farmer, Yuka Lassila. Uh, where was on the, having a ride on the tractor to, to go for some works. And uh, he said in, 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 in an interview something which is nice to quote and then we take it further. So I just read it out for you because it's a good one. So first is first of all, food is first of all, what joins all of us, right? Uh, we eat every day, it brings, it brings us together. Um, so then in whose hands the control of our food system is, including of course water, in those hands the control of society lies, it's so pervasive. Um, so in other words, people can more govern their own lives if food, the food system is in their control. In that sense, all efforts done to get food back under the control of people is very important for the development of society. And only by addressing this, we can change a society more just and fair. So what is being raised here, and I put it under the topic of like, what kind of insights are coming from these struggles for food sovereignty for food as a commons. So first of all, it's saying what we are actually saying many people and places are saying, that if we change our basic need system, so meaning that if we change the production, distribution, consumption of our basic needs as food and energy, uh, we can be developing pathways to much more uh, socially, ecologically better and healthier communities and society locally and globally. That's something that is being said in quite some places. Food, energy, housing, transport, they are game changers, right? Change them, you can change many things. Um, but however, what was also brought forward here 
is that these things are game changers when they are rooted in people's processes around their daily needs uh, and not left to financial profit-seeking markets because we have seen time and time again that they do not deliver. So in other words, food and energy and other basic needs, they can definitely lead to systemic change, but only if and when these processes are in the hands of people. So when they become a common. And yeah, that's really a, a, a good insight here. When we often, when we want to talk about change, we want to address what are, uh, and contest governments are doing. Uh, of course, what corporations are doing and all that is valid. But it's also important to acknowledge that roots of change ultimately also need to lay in what we are doing on a daily basis. Um, and there is, of course, the challenge because we have so many things which are against us to be engaging in those processes. But it is only by doing so that you really start to understand, as for me also, what the Time Bank brought forward as also uh, our full co-op. It's then when you go there that you start to understand what is wrong in law, what is wrong in our political processes, um, like what are our demands towards any kind of, um, is it our city uh, or any other kind of possible partners? What are our demands that could strengthen our initiatives to grow stronger? It can only happen by engaging, engaging in them. And uh, yeah, and another insight here is then of course that this is not just about the local. Uh, if you talk about food sovereignty, it's certainly not something uh, which fits, which is the same. The struggles are not the same everywhere, but they are profoundly interconnected. If we are wanting that there is food sovereignty, uh, when we typically are able to look at, for instance, um, countries and continents like, like, like Africa uh, or in, in, in Asia, and we, we talk about that, how we should be doing away with this uh, notions of expert-led uh, crops and uh, growing cultivations, but that people should be able to grow and, and feed themselves for their own good, according to good, healthy food. We have to understand that we need to take back our sovereignty and we need to start to grow our own food. Um, it's as simple, simple as that. So it's also about justice uh, to come to more commons and commoning. Yes, now I shared with you a bit about our COPE also. Um, very briefly still that uh, we had, now it's not anymore so um, active uh, today, but um, we have had a collective called commons.fi. And um, just to tell you, if it interests you, I can, I can share it, but just dropping with you the notion that we, we came to a uh, solidarity economy uh, building manifesto, um, which we wanted to carry through it. It was a manifesto of principles and thoughts with which we wanted to start to map, to map solidarity economy initiatives uh, in our places and spaces, and to then also through that uh, start to understand what would be the demands of those actors. Uh, it's something that we came out with, that we developed together uh, with different uh, civil society actors in, in 2013. We tried again in 2019 to launch it. it uh, I see it so that, the, yeah, there was a, a problem with coming to a real driving, basically people that could really take this forward for it takes time and energy, um, but are still seeing it as like a, a valuable way to go about it for different initiatives to come together and to think that what are our common values and can we create a map and create more visibility for that other economy that we are believing in. Um, we developed some sort of a questionnaire, which was almost like the development of uh, indicators uh, for the, the mapping of actors. And we had different kind of interviews that we did with different actors. Um, and another thing what we tried to do was to talk to Helsinki City Council, like in different Spanish cities in France also. There are cities where they have come to working groups for another economy which is having a very active relation with a platform of actors working for another economy and therefore where there can be real dialogue about demands. Because for instance, in our case with the Time Bank, 
it was clearly, of course, that we had the proposal of a time tax, but there was no real political path uh, to talk about the things and to bring it forward uh, for discussion. We were just basically shouting and there was a few seminars and, um, and that was it. So you need ultimately, even though you're working on your own, you need to get that role in society also cleared out and, and get a political pathway, pathway for that. Yeah, that in, in brief, what our collective tried to do. Um, yeah, I, I have here, uh, these, are the, we, these are some questions about, uh, that can provoke thoughts about to think about the things that were talked about in this talk. Uh, what, are we, what are we thinking about the premise with regards to change that was presented and, and how do we think about the initiatives that are around that, around us? And um, what do we think that should happen for things to get strengthened? Um, just listed some of the things here that sometimes when when are talking about similar issues also with others these are the things that we kind of come to come to talk about um but yeah i think this is what i wanted to share with you and perhaps if we would have still some more other questions or if we could take our common discussion in some direction or another we'll be glad to hear that So first, a big round of applause, perhaps, for the presentation part. And for us to wake up a, a bit more in the evening. Uh, I know there's at least one question about time banks. Uh, and I will ask it myself because uh, I heard it the other day. And it was about this notion that everybody has the equal chance to participate. I think it was on your slide as well. Yeah. But if we have somebody who has a lot of free time for whatever reason and somebody else who is really working from nine to five and then going to the other job as well and they don't have the 24 hours in the day so so the question was is it really equal or how could it be more equal or is the time that the very busy person uh commits should it be even more valuable then or or did yeah. you see or thought about this in your process yeah this is also one of the things that that comes up and it 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 can of course be seen as a difficult one but um yeah ultimately ultimately it's just the opening of a discussion in which we are looking at at like all of our times and it could even then throw up discussions about uh uh you know what work is is, is being done by that person how is the other person uh, fulfilling or doing with uh with his or her or, or their time um uh so it it, it throws open these kind of issues uh, that is never never I mean for us the the premise has totally stayed uh, the same because it's the most fruitful way uh, to be to be walking uh, on and uh, as said again um, that the the time tokens their way of accounting it would of course in a way be ridiculous to say that we are really exchanging time <laughs> I mean there is of course in a way there's no such thing we're we're talking about accounting and we're we're talking about that we're trying to keep track because the whole principle i mean the whole premise of the time bank the notion of it i mean the, the idea is not to put it in place in places where everything already works well between people the the issue is that it opens up discussions in places where things are not equal uh that it can Sometimes you can have networks of people that work very nicely together, but then what about the person that does not belong to that network? So it's it's about becoming more inclusive in, in our workings together, in our neighbory help. It's about looking in the eye that there are perhaps some of us that are uh, have to carry too much on their shoulders and how can we help uh, also in those situations? So um, no, we haven't won wanted to go to define anybody's time uh, in any different way, then it would be more an issue of that we need to look at structural impediments that there of course are for people uh, to perhaps do the work that they want to do. Um, and um, how can we come to situations in which people would perhaps have more time to be engaged uh, in meaningful activities that again is, is another discussion. But um, yeah, we, 
the premise still remains the same whilst acknowledging that there are different factors which are interfering and making it difficult for people also to take part. Mm. I was wondering, uh, you uh, talked about inclusivity. Um, how would people with disabilities contribute to the uh, time bank? Or uh, would they have some support systems to like yeah. give some time bank tokens or the, for, the, for them for free? Or how do, how do like people with disabilities are uh, accounted for? Hmm. Again, uh, the issue of the equality and the worth of many different kind of contributions is again uh, put on the table. Um, uh, perhaps a little bit bypassing what you're saying, because um, we can, for instance, you could, for instance, also connect this to the issue of that. If I, in an, in an, in an hour, I would be able to do this and this and that, and somebody else in an hour is going to be doing only this and that, um, you know, you could enter in all, into all kinds of discussions. Um, but the premise again is going that we are we are we are talking about equal value of contributions. We're talking about trust that we are every one of us is given what can be given, and there's also fundamental uh, less somebody getting tovi is is nothing away from me. Um, so what what you receive is is not away from me. Uh, this is not about stacking up. So obviously you, you have a check and balance and you have open accounts, uh, which promotes, wants to promote trust and also wants to, you know, if, if you, somebody would really be having a feeling that somebody's abusing the system, so to speak, that there's something unfair going on, then that needs to be brought up and discussed. But actually in all of these other uh, cases and also like what you are saying, the the fundamental promise of, of, of premise of the equality of contribution stays. We also have been having that there has been um, a kind of a support um, place where people could come to who were having troubles with, with doing certain things and who could be accompanied uh, whilst doing it. Um, I think if we, you could imagine that there could even come much more uh, active um, workings around that, that how to help people to participate uh, in the time bank. We by far did not yet get into old areas, by far not yet. Um, so like what you are suggesting could definitely also be possible that there would, for instance, be a group that would be specifically also trying to look at that, that how can we really be inclusive, how can we support it? And how could we really be welcoming to all? Because it's definitely also promoting exchanges between uh, many different peoples in, in, in many different, um, living in different places of town, uh, neighborhoods, I mean, uh, age, um, different kind of backgrounds, definitely all of that. And maybe one more question. Um... So uh, we talked about goods and uh, uh, I was thinking, how would you determine um, a price of, a, of um, maybe even the, the food bag uh, that we talked about? Would, would it be like, um, or maybe, okay, so let's say it's one toby and how much stuff would be the, in there and who would determine how much stuff gets to put in there and uh, yeah would would maybe somebody put less stuff in and uh, maybe some other like um, producer would put more in and would there be like a market system like developing there or mm. um, well the whole issue of goods in the time bank of course always is a uh, always is a difficult one um, what we had, first of all, in the community exchange systems, because it's also uh, a place where local currencies um, exchange with, for instance, Time Bank. So we had to give a monetary to the hour, which was not something we were promoting around to be the measure stick for anything, but we had to put it. Uh, and as far as I know, it was so that there was a pinpointing of 10 euros on an hour. 
uh, I live in the middle why why that happened um, but so so there's a kind of notion there then then there is another notion which is about uh, fairness and usefulness uh, so it's a conversation and it's an it's an ongoing conversation uh, there would for instance be cases of um, somebody uh, taking care of somebody's uh, pet over the weekend I mean what do you do again that's then agreement uh, if you talk about the food bag so in our case we have uh, one food bag for everybody as said so we don't make smaller or, or bigger so we would have the food bag and I have to say I've now forgotten I think it was also with um, um, it was a the, the, the a monthly membership somehow that was in the time bank and I remember also that it, it, it changed how we put it uh, so it's it's like a dynamic dynamic conversation and then it relates also to of course like what is happening to be possible in the time bank so uh, in this case it was so that with the topics there was actually somebody who was coming to do uh, talco so communal works and was then uh, getting topics we actually we still have um, as a part of our uh, talco system so our communal work system uh, we have a minimum requirement for people to per season, if they're like two seasons in a year, per season do 16 hours of communal works. So that's basically just two days in a, in a, in a, in a, in a summer or in a winter season. So that's absolutely not very much. And then we have had the notion that if you can go, if you go over that, you would be able to uh, get tovis from the time bank. So that was one way in which we wanted to do things. Um, that is not being uh, actively used at the moment, which, which relates to the situation in which the time bank is, but um, it could be uh, if there would be, again, more attention put into these processes and, and promote it more and, and, and talk more about it. Um, but so, yeah, so that is an issue of, of, of conversation and determining, and then the notion of fairness. fairness it, it needs to feel fair uh, what then happens and, and be okay for everybody. That's the main. Hi, Ru hi, Ruby. Um, my name is Michael. I have a question for you. And first of all, thank you for the presentation. Very inspiring stuff. Um, my question is, um, how did you handle the situations where the two different sides of a time bank were not in an agreement of how the service or product was delivered? Let's say that the product was broken or the service was not satis uh, did not create any satisfaction for the other side. Mm. We, 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 we got a whole working group for that. So with uh, uh, the group who makes the, uh, how do you call it? Um, ah, now the English word is escaping me. Uh, uh, who negotiates when, when people are at the conflict with each other. So we have we had a group we have a group for that where you can turn to in case something happens, and 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 I have to tell you that it certainly did happen, but very very sporadically, and it it actually it um I have yeah they they were actually most of the time they were about rather silly things that became big things. Um, I remember one time having to there was a there was I think it started from a bad communication and then there went something wrong and I literally had to be what was it again I had to take a it was a vase for for a party for where there had been some bouquets I literally had to take it from somebody and bring it to a next train station there was there was a stupid conflict going on about something something very silly um yeah conflict certainly do happen but then they also need to get worked out and as said um yeah we had a we had a group for that and um no big no big issues happened um people sometimes felt insecure about privacy issues and we talked a lot about that that should you start to ask id things and then the issue comes up for instance that 
uh, you know, if you want to have a, uh, somebody who will be watching for your uh, smaller children at home and issues like that. But then again, you come back to the issue that, well, now we need to use common sense. I think all of us, if the issues of like that, there would be somebody who'd be watching your children when you are not there, obviously that will be a person that you will be knowing. Um, so always in these kind of cases or questions, um, kind of get trying to get the ball back to, to common sense thinking and, and seeing, seeing what is happening and uh, try to offer an answer to that. But so no big incidences happened, which really became uh, out, of, out of control, basically. Yeah. And uh, maybe you mentioned this, uh, and I missed it, but regarding to the quality of the service and products, was there any kind of a rating system that would help uh, a person, you know, to, to decide if this is a good person to babysit my kids, for example? Yeah, exactly. Or repair my uh, something, right? Yeah. Yes, this, this uh, certainly did become an issue. And at some point, uh, we started to use a system that you are able to give, give, uh, give a feedback. So um, we talked a lot about it because there's a problem here. Because on the one hand, it's very logic. You would do that. But how then would it be possible for a person who just simply has not yet been in any contact with anybody? How is that person ever going to become the person who will be able to do something, right? Um, so it's also it's also a complicated one so we had to we, we kind of we, we put such a there was there has been now there is such a system that you can give uh this kind of um how do you call it you can you can give like a reference about the person for what has been happening how, how do you call it that you can see that by a person's account but at the same time then in our abc and our principles uh, and in our meetings, we talked about it, that we need to give everybody also a chance. So again, a difficult one, but um, trying to find a way also with it. So encouraging also to take contact to that person who has not yet done any exchange in the time bank. That's, um, that's again, uh, um, yeah, it's also, it's, it, it requires a bit of yeah courage and also again that notion of trust that is trying to be enhanced and and wanting to see that that um there are many capacities uh, around yeah and of course also logically the more complicated your issue becomes uh the more of course you are are checking what is happening and that's of course only again like also common sense there um you need to of course also also walk with wisdom when you need to do that. But um, yeah. yeah. So the take home message is that human relations are complicated, but I see another question. Hi, Ruby. <clears throat> Thank you very much. I just wanted to ask a question about the food uh, cup. Uh, so I'm trying to figure it out in my head. How does it work that um, there are these different roles of producers, consumers, and the investors in trying to establish this food co-op as, um, uh, as a common. So how are the decisions made? Um, and also, this role of investors is a little bit tricky for me because uh, naturally I would understand that if it's a common, then everybody has shares in some way. Um, and uh, yes, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that. And then also I was wondering whether the food co-op is networked in some way with other uh, food sovereignty actors like uh, other co-ops or other small producers and so on. How does that work? Thank you. Yeah. Yes, thanks for the questions. Um, yeah, about the first one. Um, so um, producer members, uh, so uh, uh, when you join as a normal member, uh, you will be buying a share and uh, that's 200 euros. It's a one-time uh, share. Uh, that gives you uh, the right to be either uh, having a uh, order a food bag or it could be the eggs or it could be we have a third one which is the greenhouse bag. 
Um, so this is a one-time share giving you that right. You can choose for width. So for instance, if you want all three of them, uh, at the same time you are having three, you would be having bought three shares and then come the, the monthly payments. So this 200 euros blocks, so to speak, um, they are a part of the of, of the building of the of the capital there of the of the co-op. Um, producer members they have bought five shares um, and are with that uh, they have asked to become uh, producer members and and they have been granted uh, producer membership. Um, and accordingly, then is also your 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 right, of course, to take part in the decision making of the co-op and your right to vote. Now, investors can be buying shares. We had shares. We have done our first round and our shares were uh, 50 euros um, per share. We wanted to make it something that would be accessible for as many people who would want to be joining us. Um, with that, so we have a um, place in our board, which we try to have at 50% producer, 50% normal food members. Um, there is now also a place for uh, an investor uh, board member uh, to be in the board um, and can be expressing opinions. And, um, but at the same time, there's not uh, the voting, voting right uh, as such. So this is the way we are operating there and the logic of it all if you're thinking like like what is the use of getting like investors in a situation in which you know that there ain't going to be happening no at least not yet <laughs> big time profit and why do you want to talk about them the point here is then also is that of course are are, are believing that uh, at some point we can come to a situation that um there can be uh, a surplus and then now we're also talking about people that perhaps don't have uh all the money in the world uh to also make it possible for them to to put something back them when they have taken that you know courageous step also to be parking something at the co-op on the co-op's account uh, to be enabling things. So it turns a little bit the logic also upside down that, that uh, not only to think like uh, what's the use for anybody to be investing in this kind of a place, but to also put it in, in the fact that can we take this instrument and, and make, it, make it different. And then your second uh, question that certainly uh, that always has been uh, a strong part of of Omama, of the Food Co-op. So one of the networks that we are a, a part of is the European and International Network of CSA. So that's Urgency. Um, we are also um, actually, Omama is a part of the, um, how do you say it in English, kind of the Southern Organic uh, Association, uh, which is an official member of La Via Campesina. So we are also kind of, uh, it's, it's a bit indirectly, but very proudly uh, a member of La Via Campesina. And uh, that flag is, uh, is um, uh, hanging in our uh, grill get together space. Um, and so very much looking also at other CSAs. Hey, and in, yeah, in Finland also, uh, we have created a umbrella platform for CSAs. Our problem is we haven't been uh, actively able to take it forth as of yet. We actually in Finland, I think, well, we're, I guess, coming to some 15, only 15 CSAs in Finland, um, in Norway, <coughs> which is in a way a comparable, comparable country in terms of different conditions as also uh, population, but there, there's a much stronger network already today. Why is that? Can be can be talking about that. Uh, why why do these differences occur in in different countries? Um, not to mention, of course, elsewhere, elsewhere in Europe. But um, so we we have also that national platform building, but certainly also international with wanting to do exchange. And for instance, also um, we had an agricultural camp not so long ago, and very much the notion of wanting to exchange. Uh, practice also between people from different places and culturally doing things perhaps different. What can we 
learn from each other and uh, how can other discussions feed into our experiences wanting to be sustainable. So very much enjoying and uh, believing that that's a way to get stronger, to, to network and to link. Does anybody know if Estonia has any community supported agriculture things? Not yet, no. I wonder why, how are we so backwards in time uh, in that sense? Mm -hmm. Or it's our background of, of Soviet kind of type, type of commoning has really turned people off of, of doing things together, maybe. So we have a lot of kind of yeah, philosophical work to do before we get to an actual actual community farms, perhaps. There's uh, one in Lithuania that started this year, maybe... Lithuania? <laughs> yeah, maybe we're somewhere sandwiched sandwich between, between other countries who are doing better and then somehow we can do better as well. But our stay has become difficult here because we're smelling the grilling uh, uh, smells from the outside. So I think it's about time. So really yeah. thank you again, uh, Ruby, for this uh, very excellent talk and really hopefully got some really details about these things we've been talking about these past days about time banks and then how it is in reality is, is much, much more interesting even. So thank you again. And okay. Have a nice evening. You too. <laughs> Have a good harvest. <laughs>